Yes. All right, all right. What is going on, guys? Uh, PandaCast episode nine. Look us up, patreon.com slash pandamedia, where you can get the show on Mondays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Fridays on Fifi's for YouTube, which is youtube.com slash jamesblackpanda. Also, podcast service for the audio version. Uh, basically, any any podcast service out there. Look us up that way. Go to the Panda Media Patreon to be able to get the RSS feed so you can plug it in and find it quite easily. All the links that are there. Today we're going to be talking about Elden Ring because it's a hot button. Everybody's talking about it. And the hype is real, I should say, because I have Elden Ring. Um, Jarrell said he would get it, but there's no traditional co-op, so I don't know if he's going to actually get it. And it's fucking brutally hard. Like I played like 10 hours and I had like 0%. <laughs> I have like 0% done, and I've played for like 10 hours. Um, also, we're going to be talking about the Steam Deck, the handheld PC, basically. Go into some yeah. details on what it is, what we think it can do, things like that. I think it's pretty cool. Jarrell thinks it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to get one because I don't play games on PC, and handheld gaming isn't really my thing, I guess. But... I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about that. So, uh, first up, I want to go into depth about Elden Ring. All right. I have a question, uh, Jarrell. Have you played any From Software games? No. The funny thing I told you, I still have the, was it, the Demon Souls or Dark Souls in the case on the open. So, I haven't oh, played yeah. none of them. I've seen people play it, but I'm, like, I'm interested to watch it, but I'm like, I haven't played it. <laughs> so, no Bloodborne, no yeah. Dark Souls, no Demon Souls. But I've watched people play all three of them, or four of them, however many it is. Uh, so there's Demon Souls, and then there's three Dark Souls games, and then Bloodborne. And then Sekiro. Yeah. I think Sekiro. are the From Software games okay. that are out right now. And then Elden Ring is the new one. So with these types of games, and oh, something that I do want to throw out there, just because we're talking about Demon Souls, Dark Souls, things like that. Um, for the foreseeable future... For right now, uh, McGavin will not be on the show. He's in the military and working, and that's all I know. And um, yeah. basically, just going to not be on the show for a couple of weeks. Um, possibly, most likely a couple of months. But we wish him the best. Hopefully, he stays safe, things like that. Um, watches his six. And uh, the reason why I want to bring him up right now is just because uh, he was the one that was into Dark Souls 3 before I was. I think when Bloodborne yeah. was free on PlayStation Plus, he got it. But I got Bloodborne when it came out. Bloodborne unboxing. Um, and <laughs> it's good. And they are really hard. They are really hard as far as when people say, oh, get good, they mean it. Yeah. The game can be brutal, but can also be extremely rewarding when you get better at them. And with Bloodborne, that was the one that I jumped into first. That was the first one I ever played of From Software. Yeah. And I remember our vice principal was super into Demon Souls, like back on PS3, like when that first came out. Uh, freaking Housinator. He uh, <laughs> Platinum, like he three played times. Demon Souls. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he played Demon Souls, uh, the English version, the European version, and the Japanese version, or something like that. And he's like, "Yeah, the Japanese version is way harder." And I'm like, "God damn!" Like, I don't <laughs> even know the difference. But he played Demon Souls, and that's what the remake that you have is, right? Uh, that's the one that came out. It was Demon Souls, yeah, remastered. Yeah, for the PS5. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the one that came out with. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I would. Th I think that would be cool to play. But some people, like, everybody is talking about Elden Ring and the hype around it, things like that. And it, the hype is real. And I got people that I work with that I asked them, I'm like, hey, have you played Elden Ring? And they're like, dude, the commercials look great. Like, the gameplay looks dope. It looks fucking cool. But I heard yeah. it's, like, outrageous. And I go, Elden Ring might be the one that you want to jump into because they're, it's open world. So if you're ramming your head against the wall with a boss just go do something else like just go beat a mini boss go over here go kill a bunch of enemies level up uh go explore the map 
go play, go back to places that you've been because there's going to be things that you missed. Like I went, I beat this area and I was like, oh yeah, I beat the boss there and everything. And then left, came back yeah. and I was like, oh shit, I found like a doorway underneath and I went into, like there was a bunch of little enemies and stuff like that and I would just go back and farm them, farm them. And I killed them all like a bunch of times. Like it'll respawn, kill them all, respawn, yeah. kill them all just to level up. And I walked over to this one little area and there's a tent with stairs underneath it. And I'm like, what the fuck? And you go downstairs and there's a boss. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even, I didn't even know this guy was here. So yeah, another boss. That's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. So it's like there's so many little nooks and crannies that you can find yourself falling into. And um, it's great. <laughs> it's really cool because he was worried about it being too hard. And I go, it's not like Dark Souls three where literally the first thing you do is fight a boss. And there's no way around it. Like, this yeah. game, you spawn, you create your character, you walk outside, there's a boss, you go over there and hit it a couple of times, no idea what you're doing, and it kills you in, like, two seconds. And then you wake up like that in, like, this, like, other place. It's another... It's part of the game. You're supposed to lose to that boss. There's a pot... I wonder if yeah. there's people who have created a new character and beat that boss. It's really hard. And got something for it? I don't know. That'd be interesting to find out. But if you die, that's kind of part of the game. It's not like you have to go back and fight that guy. But in Dark Souls 3, dude, the very first thing you do is you create your character, fight a boss. You walk outside, fight a boss. Okay. And there's no progression. Like he's blocking the only <laughs> door into the beginning of the game. You got to fight this guy. And he's hard as shit. It took me, I died like 15 times on the first boss in Dark Souls 3. To the point where I got fucking yeah. mad. And was like, man, what the hell? <laughs> but once I got past that and I played with McGavin, I played with him for probably like, I want to say like three or four hours like in a day. And I was like, dude, this game is awesome. It's fun. But they were doing all the killing. Like I was just kind of going, getting taken on a tour through Dark Souls. And as soon as I played by myself, I got wrecked and fucking was like, all right, done. Sold the game. Didn't play it again. But Bloodborne <laughs> is one of those games where it's like oh. I would always come back to a little bit. I'd always come back to it a little bit. Yeah. And when I was telling the guy about it, I go, yeah, Elden Ring is easier to get into because yeah. you could just run around, level up, but you got to want, you got to set goals for yourself. And I've done, th I've done this in games where it's like, I would just follow what they're telling. Oh, excuse me. Follow what the game's telling me to do. You ever do that? In like an open, open world game. And you're, they're like, Hey, go here, go here, go here. And you just do that. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, yeah me, my bad, dude. It sounds like you were some. Hold on. Yeah, no problem. It sounds like some military helicopter, so I had to take it easy. My bad, <laughs> Frag <laughs> Yeah, my bad. <laughs> no, nah, I hope not, bro. But yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I like open world games, but I like the ones where it tells you kind of what to do because I'll freaking get lost. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, where the heck am I supposed oh. to be going? And I'll be like, okay. But, yeah. Oh yeah, then but yeah. All right. So with this, right? I've realized that I've been playing open world games wrong because I've been playing open world games like, oh, what's this marker on the map? Let me go check that out. Right? Yeah. Like getting taken on the guided tour. And I realized that Elden Ring is the complete opposite. So you might hate it. You literally spawn in and then you're just standing there. You walk outside and there's a guy, and he's like, oh, hi, Tarnished. Like, you're in the worlds between. Like, go figure that shit out. I would say go find the pieces of the Elden Ring in that direction. And then you're like, yeah. okay. And then you, you look in the direction he's pointing. Like, you look around him, and there's a tree sentinel, like, guy with a giant shield, like... <laughs> trotting around on a horse and you're like i gotta go fucking that way really and then you go over there he wrecks your shit but you can go around him and you're just like F what the f like it just puts you in difficult situations but the thing about this one is it's different because in bloodborne there's like a little area that you're in and you can kind of level up until you're able to beat these two bosses there's a wolf boss and then there's like a guy with an axe 
And once you beat them two, now you're kind of into the game proper. Like, that's kind of the tutorial. But you got to beat two bosses to beat the tutorial. <laughs> and yeah. Dark Souls 3, like, literally the first thing you have to do is beat a boss. Like, you don't even get to upgrade. You don't get to do nothing. You don't find weapons. Whatever weapon you start with, whatever bullshit you have when you create your character, that's it. And those are the only other two that I've played. The one that I do think is interesting is Sekiro. That's the one that I kind of want to get into because they say there's no leveling system. It's just literally skill. Like, you got to get good and That's cool. learn the game. Yeah, which it, it is cool with that. Like, you learn new skills and stuff like that, but it's, it's different than Elden Ring. In Elden Ring, you do level up, things like that. But the main thing is... I realized that I was playing these games wrong and it's kind of making me want to go back and play Bloodborne again or play more of it and experience more of it because yeah. when I'm playing Elden Ring, I was getting my ass handed to me by this other boss and I'm like, man, I, <laughs> this dude is way too strong. Like, his health bar is like this, mine's like that and I'm doing this much damage on him. Like, uh, you know, like the emoji of like the okay where like the fingertips are like barely touching like that's how much damage i'm doing yeah when i hit this guy but man i saw this one video the guy he's like me i'm wearing like armor trying to like protect myself and i watch a video on tiktok of a guy on like the dude the one i sent you where the guy's like walking up shirtless yeah. and he like dodges <laughs> parries him parries him executes and hits him hits him hits him and he's like taking like half his health every like knocking yeah. him down like big chunks of health and I go, oh, I realize that I don't parry. I need to learn how to parry. And parrying is fucking hard. It's like you got to be like perfect timing on every fucking parry. And if you parry too early, the dude will hit you. If you parry too late, the dude will hit you. And they'll be switching up their speed of attacks. Like they'll do a, like a big like swoop and they'll just hold it up there yeah. and then hit quickly. Yeah. And they'll hit like hit down quick and you're like got to – quick react <laughs> or they'll hold it up and then do like the swooping motion where it's like a slower attack and they'll hold it longer or they'll hold it shorter like they'll play with you and yeah. or at least this boss is doing that and man it's like i haven't even beaten a big boss yet like a main boss like a ma like there's 12 main bosses yeah. and i think there's like 92 bosses in the game I've beat maybe like three mini bosses. Yeah, I just and seen that's it. the video and got destroyed. Ten hours. <laughs> yeah, me? Got yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got destroyed. I've probably died 20, 25 times on this first boss, like first story boss. And he's blocking the way into like this area, like this castle that I'm supposed to go to. And I'm like, I guess I'm in the wrong spot. Like I got to go do something else. And then there's like these <laughs> other dudes. Where it's like, I teleport in, I go to this thing, and I'm like, oh, what's in here? And it takes me to a, uh, a different area where another boss is. And the dude just eats my lunch in, like, the first five seconds of me being there. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, clearly I don't need to be here. That's a lot of Elden Ring. Like, you walk into a room, get destroyed, you're like, well, but I can go somewhere else. But in yeah, come back to other words... Yeah, but other things I have to kind of push myself, and this is what I do like about it, where giving myself those goals, like, okay, I'm going to, when I'm streaming or when I'm playing off stream, I basically was just leveling up a little bit. And not, then I was doing those yeah. test streams the other day, and then I'm going to probably this weekend, either tonight or tomorrow night, uh, stream up and try to really just dedicate and fight that boss because i do considerable damage i might level up a little bit and then go fight him and explore the map a little bit more but the game is really cool and it's one of those things where when people say hey get good they mean it like you just have to learn the game most games nowadays hold your hands they big text like hey do this because it does this <laughs> in that game you'll pick up an item yeah. and it'll be like the uh what is it a smoldering butterfly and then you examine it and it's like yeah it does something and you're like okay <laughs> and then it's like you don't know until you try it and then you eat it and this isn't true for the smoldering butterfly but this is true in bloodborne where there was like an item where 
It doesn't tell you what it is. It says, oh, uh, it's a consumable. You eat it, and it knocks you to yeah. fucking literally one bit of health, and it almost kills you. And you're like, <laughs> what did it? What benefit did this give me? I, I'm lost. And then you go in. There's in Elden Ring. There's a, a like a, the round table or what have you. And you walk into one of the rooms, mm-hmm. and there's this lady in there, and she's like, oh man, you look like you've been uh, roughing it, basically. And she's like. Uh, is it all right if I give you a hug? And you're like, I could go for a hug right now after getting spanked by a boss. And she gives you a hug. And what that does is, it every time you die, a bit of your runes, souls, goes away. Mm. Hold on. Oh, I guess I wasn't playing. <laughs> um... But like, you hu- like you give her a hug, and you- then you're like, whatever. And she gives you something. She's like, hey, here's the thing. It's a uh, whatever blessing. And you're like, cool. I wonder what that does. But then you have like a negative deep, like a negative buff on you uh, for the rest of the game, where it's like you slowly lose health, you slowly lose uh, runes every time you die, and it's like it just makes the game fucking like minutely harder. And you're like. Fuck, I wish yeah. I didn't hug her. But then I learned that if you eat the thing or use the thing that she gives you, it takes the negative thing off. And you're like, okay. But it's just goofy. It's just goofy. And then it gets harder and harder and harder to level up every time you level up. And It makes sense. I don't know. It's just a game where it's like it kind of drops you in the world. You make your character, and then it's like, all right, go explore. And... Ram your head against a the wall. A game about a game. As you wish. <laughs> yeah. A game about no. a game. It's a game about a game. What was that from? I forgot. The ones you love. It was on the, uh, the Facebook page. <laughs> a game about a game. The ones you love. Oh, yeah. The it fucking was like the description Paradise or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. what is this shit? A game about a game, the ones you love, the ones you play with your <laughs> friends. Yeah, some shit like that. But um, you actually have Demon Souls and Bloodborne because Bloodborne's in the PlayStation Collection. If you want to test out those games, I would suggest Bloodborne because I hear Demon Souls is faithfully remastered to how ridiculously hard and I think they said that Demon Souls is like one of the hardest ones and then Dark Souls 2 is like everybody's least favorite Sekiro I'm told is really hard and then Elder Ring I'm told is really hard Bloodborne I, I think people like the general idea is that it's a bit easier yeah. which I kind of agree with like I didn't ever feel just outrageous the reason why i was getting dogged in uh, bloodborne was because i wasn't playing right i wasn't parrying i wasn't using the gun when i was supposed to i wasn't dodging or learning the bosses i was just wailing on the guy and hoping i didn't fucking get murdered whereas in uh blood elden ring i'm feeling a lot more a lot more confident with fighting the enemies. And once you get like that base level of confidence, you're like, okay, cool, this is kind of nice. And then it throws a more ridiculous... Like I saw a video today. Somebody's like running on a rooftop. They jump down. And the enemy just spawns out of nowhere. Like it's invisible. It spawns and kills the guy instantly, (laughs) one hit. And somebody in the comments goes, yeah, when you haven't died in a while in Elden Ring... Elden Ring finds a way to kill you. Dang. And it's just funny. She just shows up. <laughs> just like she's up. Yeah, just out of Dang. nowhere. Like, out of nowhere. Just shows up. Like, invisible character. The guy jumps out on the ground. Visible character comes out of nowhere, stabs him, and kills him. Like that. And you're like, what the fuck, man? I'd be so pissed. Yeah, I mean, I seen the uh, the game, man. It looks pretty cool. Like I watched you play. I watched a little YouTube trailers, like different stuff that people are doing. Everybody's saying it's like freaking awesome. Um, obviously, even when I take the screenshots, 
the uh on the PlayStation Store, like watching the trailer and everything. I'm like, dang, this looks really freaking yeah. good. And that's what it's yeah. like, even though I want to play the game and it's like difficult or whatever, but just visually, like I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I like I like doing stuff like that. Like even though I like playing the game, sometimes I just be sitting there looking like, dang, they did a good job visually. Uh, and it makes the game that much better, and it makes you want to keep playing because it's like, oh shoot, I wonder how the rest of the map looks. Like you were saying, just exploring mm-hmm. is probably one of the best part about video games. Just exploring. So even if you get killed, yeah. it's like, oh shoot, that was in 4K. <laughs> that looks sexy. That was in 4K. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Four K. It's definitely cool. <laughs> it's definitely cool. But if you are interested in checking those out, I would say, I would say download Bloodborne on the PlayStation Plus collection because Bloodborne was the first one that I jumped into. It was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Gives you the experience, and then also has more of a gothic feel instead of a knights and armor feel and i think i do i think i like elden ring better than bloodborne but i do feel like bloodborne was a more traditional souls game you know and it's funny everybody in elden ring it's called like sites of grace that's where you save like the bonfires and dark souls and the lamps in bloodborne and somebody was doing a video. They talk about the sites of grace. He called them um, sacred sites. And everybody in the comments was like, bonfire, bonfire, it's a bonfire. <laughs> because they're so used to the Dark Souls terminology. <laughs> and everybody calls it the Dark Souls terminology. Uh, and because Bloodborne was my first one, I still say, like, I say sites of grace or the grace sites where in Elden Ring. But then I'll fuck up because they're called runes, which is what your echoes are or your souls. Mm -hmm. And because Bloodborne was my first and pretty much the one that I spent the most time with, I keep calling them echoes. Like, oh, shit, I lost my echoes. Like, I'm so used to saying echoes from Bloodborne. (laughs) So even in Elden Ring, I'm calling them echoes. And everybody in uh, fucking, when everybody calls them souls, I'm like, I cringe a little bit. Like, just like they probably cringe when I say echoes (laughs) because souls was the original. (laughs) I don't know. But when people say runes, I'm like, I know why they're saying runes. It's because people who are, this is their first Souls game, don't know yeah. to call them Souls or Echoes. So they know that runes are runes. But yeah. You, you gonna try it? You gonna check out uh, Demon Souls or Bloodborne? Man. You already have them. Man. I don't know. Yeah, I know. But I don't know. We'll see. Cause I still got to see how much space it's going to be. And I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to probably finish uh, Spider-Man Remastered, the DLC, and then d- delete it. So then I have space for uh, the probably Bloodborne or just buy Elden Ring. Because I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, and with uh, something that I learned, something that I learned with the ps5 and I, a lot of people don't really talk about it even though it is a feature and it is displayed on the screen the my the wd my passport four terabyte i basically just took it and plugged it into the back of the ps5 and i can play all my ps4 games from the external hard drive so i don't have to download those onto the system and the playstation 5 games when you're not using them you can move them over to the external hard drive and then free up space on the console itself. And let's say you have Knockout City or let's use bigger games like um, Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2. You can move your Red Dead Redemption 2 to the external, move your Call of Duty onto the system, play Call of Duty, and then when you're done, move it to the external and move Red Dead back over. And it's way faster than deleting and re-downloading. Uh, with that, do they uh still have the fast loading times like for the PS4 games, or no, or is it just the same the P- as if you was playing the PS4? Uh, it, I believe it would be the same as the PS4 because you're going off of the hard drive, which is slower. So if you wanted to, you could basically just keep swapping them out, like move the PS4 to the console itself and then move it back. But with playing Rocket League straight from the hard drive, the external, it worked yeah. fine. It was just pretty straightforward. When it comes to 
I guess when it comes to that, I would say you're not doing anything that you're not used to. If you're used to playing that PS4 game with a little bit of the slow loading because of the HDD yeah. instead of the SSD. And Astro's Bot. Astro's Playroom. Okay. That game is so good. That game is so yeah. good. I can't... I'm, yeah. I, I'm just... I, I'll be at work and I'll be singing the songs like S-S-D-D. Like... <laughs> Nah, it's cool. But yeah, check out if you got a PS5, check out Astro's Playroom. And Ooh. yeah. Okay. But um that's all I really have to say about Elden Ring. It's pretty good. Like if you I would I would say this. For anybody who's looking to get into Elden Ring or a Souls game, do understand that it is difficult and it is going to the reason why it makes people upset, and it's going to make you upset, is because most games now do hold your hand. They kind of tell you, hey, this does this, go do this, walk over here, there's like all these different things on your screen to tell you exactly what's up, a little indicator from behind telling you that an enemy saw you, so you know that, hey, they're alerted to you. That None of that is in... Uh, Elden Ring or these yeah. Souls games like you'll be walking and then a random ass fucking goat will come up and like ram you because you got too close to it and you didn't see it so it basically is just teaching you to play the game differently and you have to learn the game once you learn the game and understand that oh everything in this game is trying to kill me and it will show up out of nowhere <laughs> there's no indicator that it's around me Every in, do not underestimate any enemy. Like a, there's these fucking inchworm things that are like t they look yeah. like they're ten feet long, and they're made out of these stone rocks, and they're like twenty rocks, and they're small, like small rocks. Like in comparison to my full human body, they're probably like this big, and there's like t 15, 20 of them in a row, and it just like on the ground, and it just crawls, yeah. and there's like. Or it'll stand up and kind of be like sitting like this, like a stack of balls like that, like sticking up. Are we freaking and Onyx from Pokemon? Something like that, yeah. Freaking, you walk over to it, and it's just some rocks. And you hit it, and it takes some considerable damage. But, dude, it'll curl up in a ball. Like, it'll put, like, kind of a pile of the rocks. And then it'll start glowing purple and explode if you, when you're close to it. <laughs> And you're like, you're like, why does this random inchworm of rocks fucking do this? And it's like, oh, that's just because that's what it does. Yeah. So you got to deal with it. So go deal with it. So like you said, it's like that's, learning the game. That's, like, uh, Elden Ring. Somebody knew. It's like a trap. Like it's like one of them newbie traps. Like, oh, somebody's going to come over here yeah. and try to figure out what it is. And then you probably die. <laughs> right. You, dude, you'll die off of stupid shit. Like, every single enemy can fuck you up. Easily. <laughs> now, of course, yeah. like, seriously, if you're standing there trying to, like, parry a wolf, like, it could be, like, a basic wolf. Like, the wolves, like, once you upgrade a little bit, are, like, nothing to deal with. You get on your horse, you run around in circles, you slash it one time, and it dies. It's, like, so easy. You can take out a pack of wolves in, like, five seconds. Once you learn how to fight them. But, dude, when you first encounter the wolves in, like, a cave or whatever, there's, like, three or four of them. It's like, dude, if they get around your back and they're in front of you, dude, one will be like, yeah. rat, 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 rat. The other one will be like, rat, 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 rat. And they're like, they'll just, like, two or three of them will bite you. And you get staggered every time you get hit. And then it's like, so it's like you'll get staggered by this one. It'll push you towards the other wolf, uh, inciting it to attack you. And it's like, you'll get, you'll get, uh, Packed. You'll get like herded. Like they'll freaking gang up on you. <laughs> like a realistic. Yeah. Like you just they'll, get destroyed by everything. <laughs> like, yeah. They'll just. I mean, it's not like Assassin's Creed where the enemies are like waiting for you to <laughs> par finish parrying the other guy and finish like countering the other guy before they come in with a sw uh, slash. This game is like. You're getting fucked up. I'm going to fuck you up too. And then you got two guys like trying to hit you at the same time. So what you have to do is like dip, dip back, run away, um, get them split up. 
like get like one of the guy's yeah. attention so he'll come closer and then whatever and then fight him one on one while the other dude's trying to circle around behind you and it's it's just cool what the AI does because they do pay attention and they don't just blindly run in like they'll sit there behind their shields and like they'll you hit them and they'll deflect Maybe there's right. like a move <laughs> you could do yeah there's a move you could do where it's like if you block an attack you'll deflect it like beat it away and then you can counter and like hit them and they can do the same thing so if you slash willy-nilly they'll block and counter and hit you with a heavy attack and then you're staggering back and then they'll come in with like some like quick attacks afterwards and it's like okay you can easily like lose a ton of health and you only have so many heals that you can do like it's like you get these flasks and you basically drink it and it gives you a little bit of health and you got to find items in the game to upgrade your flask so my flask has five charges but it takes two flasks to go from almost dying back to full health. So it's like, I really only have like two and a half heals with my five flasks. And again, I'm still early in the game. I think I'm level like 20, maybe. Something like that. So with that but I've played for like said, 10 hours. Do you I'm think you're having more fun with, uh, dying, with dying like two or uh Elder? Well, I haven't played much of Dying Light 2 once it swapped over to the PS5 because my save didn't transfer over. So in my mind, I'm like, I don't want to play the same like, 10, 15 hours again over on PS5 just to do it on PS5. Yeah. And then with that game, I know that some games utilize the DualSense vibrations and adaptive triggers better than other games. And this one feels like there's almost no vibration on the controller. I feel like the PS4 version, like my controller was vibrating more. And it was like kind of more immersive. Yes. Dude, if if you play a game with vibration on, and then, dude, if you turn vibration off, it feels like you're not getting that tactile <laughs> yeah. feedback. It feels weird yeah. in my mind. So I feel like there's something going on with the DualSense and its connection to Dying Light 2. I'm definitely having more fun right now with Elden Ring because for me to have fun with Dying Light 2 again, I'd have to play through fucking 10, 15 hours of stuff that I've already done. And I yeah. think what I'm going to do is with Elden Ring, because co-op is so annoying, like you have to get this fucking finger and get this other thing and get this other thing and then put a marker down on the ground and then your other person you have to go to your multiplayer settings and set a passcode and then the person that wants to come into your game you have to summon them put a marker down tell them what the passcode is in real life for them to type the passcode in go to your go to the location that you're at see the gold and then they'll be able to spawn into your game. Like, you have to do all that every time. And then when you beat the boss, they get kicked out of your lobby. You have to respawn them in. If they're, what the if heck? you die, you have to kick them out of the lobby and respawn them back in. And it can just... That's crazy. It's not meant to be a co-op game, but you can co-op in the game. And in Dying Light 2, I think what I'm going to do is just wait for McGavin to get back, get it, and then we can both jump into it and play through the story. Unless you get it, which you already said you're not going to, you think it sucks. So when the Gavin <laughs> comes back, we'll uh, we'll probably jump into Dying Light too. And I don't know exactly when because I know he wants to play Elden Ring as well. And but I think I have Dying Light too, and I'm pleased that I bought it because I did want to show Techland some kind of support because Dying Light One was so good. And by them getting an initial like really positive reaction with Dying Light Two, I know they're going to continue to support it, things like that. Because it is good. I do like Dying Light 2. And if you want to just go like run around, have some good story, and kill a bunch of zombies and just dick around in an open world, go ahead. That's like more like arcadey and fun, where Elden Ring is more like, okay, this is a serious challenge that you have to dedicate some time to learning. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. But I do... I think they're both great games. All right. I think Dying Light yeah. 2. Like I had a lot of fun with yeah. Dying Light 2 for the little bit that I did play, but I know I will go back to it, especially when McGavin gets it, so we can co-op it. Yeah, that would be awesome. I, I, I think the developers, yeah. they could have did better, like you said, because I think that's the first game you couldn't do the cross-console save thing. 
I don't know what they, they was thinking. Maybe they was like, okay, well, I don't know. Maybe a later update. They just want to get the game out and see what's going on. They could easily pass it in, but for right now, I think that was yeah. they could have did a lot better than that for sure. Yeah. So Techland, um, if you're working on that, definitely put out some kind of a blog post so I know because I think it would be good to – because, yeah, if I was able to transfer my save over and continue on PS5, I would probably be playing that. I probably would have played that uh, here and there. <laughs> but just I just don't want to start the whole game over again and just play through shit that I've already done, Yeah. like the save story beats, everything like that, because then I'm going to – not do things the way I did it. And with an open world game like that, it's kind of like, and it's supposed to be like 500 hours or some shit to do all the quests. Okay. And I was basically trying to do like every quest <laughs> that was coming. Yeah. It's insane big. So it's like, all right, I don't want to get like five hours in to replaying the same part that I've already played and then get bored and not even continue. So I'd rather just like, all right, let's put it to the side yeah. when McGavin gets it and El the Elden Ring hype goes away. I can jump back into it and really just dedicate time to it. Like, oh, yeah, let's run through this and not get burnt out yeah. by going through the same part. That doesn't make no sense to have a cross by and then for it to be the only game to literally not no, break cross save. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cross by but no cross save. Like, that's goofy as hell but other than that it does look <laughs> fucking cool and i will tell you this like going from riders republic on ps4 and dying light 2 on ps4 to dying light 2 on ps5 and riders republic on ps5 when you yeah. jump into the game and it like loads so quick like the power of the ps5 really does show off in some of the smaller details because even right now i'm Slowly putting money aside, things like that, to upgrade my monitor to a 4K monitor or at least a 2K monitor with a high frame rate, like 120 frames. But right now I'm playing on a 1080p, yeah. 60 hertz uh, TV. I think it's 60 hertz. I even need to look at the back to make sure that's true. But I'm playing on a 1080p TV. So I'm not even getting the full breadth of the resolution I can get. Yeah. But just the snappiness of the menus, the speed of the game loading... I'm already like, yeah, It in my mind, if you can just pay MSRP regular price and buy it straight from Sony, is worth it. Especially because you're getting those quality of life upgrades and you're getting access to an entire, basically pr plethora of games. Like, I immediately, with the PlayStation Plus collection, sure, a good bit of those games are games that were already on PS Plus, but it's like Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy or whatever is like $40. Uh, Resident Evil 7 Bio has like $20. So that's like 60 bucks that I save just by having those games. And there's other games on there too that are cool with the collection. Yeah, like the whole Uncharted and it, let's say, Yeah, like if you don't have Ratchet or if you don't have Uncharted or you don't have Until Dawn or you don't have Bloodborne, like you're going to be able to play Bloodborne if you want to for free because of you're just because you have a ps5 think about it like that so yeah. in my mind yeah it's totally worth it and watch a couple of episodes back called where i basically go into detail about how i ordered it registering with sony getting into the queue stuff like that so go check out that other episode guys if you're interested in okay this is what i did i o basically put my name in the queue and about two three weeks later they let me know and i got it four days after i bought it so and I didn't pay any upcharge. I paid just flat what it's supposed to cost. That's awesome. So for that, I think it's worth it. I'm so happy you it's got dope. it. Dude. I'm fucking <laughs> yeah. So dude, for real, do you I, think, I did the uh, PS5 upgrade uh, for uh, Knockout do City. Do you uh, think and, it is uh, a better the Uncharted upgrade 4. from the PS3 to PS4 than the, you think it's a bigger upgrade from the PS3 to PS4 than the PS4 to PS5? When I think about the PS3 to PS4, I remember... Okay, I would say, yes, the PS4 to PS5 is bigger in subtle ways. 
if you're talking about PS3 to PS4, I do think that we did get a lot of a lot more of the same, which we're always going to be yeah. playing games the same way. Like we were playing fucking Red Dead Redemption Two on PS3. Now we're playing Red or Red Dead Redemption on PS3. We're playing Red Dead Redemption Two on PS5, you know, or PS4. Like GTA Five. Like we're still playing the same types of games. Okay, <laughs> graphics and visuals are subjective as far as style. So you could play a game like Sifu, which is kind of more like cartoony. Or not cartoony, but like comic booky, And then you can play a game like Ori in the Blind Forest, and it's like more uh, enchanted looking and kind of neon, stuff like that. Yeah. And then you can play a game like Don't Starve, where it looks more hand-drawn and sprites. Or you could play a pixelated game, or like you could play a full-fledged like $70 fucking realistic looking game like Red Dead Redemption 2 or whatever. It's like we're all playing the same types of games. So when I go from PS3 to PS4, I feel like the quality of life upgrades were okay. I definitely think that the PS4 is a better console than the PS3, just hands down by the way it works and functions. And then when I go from PS4 to PS5, it's, again, just like that much of a boost. So PS5 is like hands down, I think, 10 times better than the PS4. Just as a console and what Definitely. it can do. Because the controller, for sure, makes it even that much better. That haptic feedback, I told you, is, is the best thing. Dude, ever. for real. <laughs> that controller is The good. controller, the controller just holding it in the hands, it's like the, joy, the joysticks feel very smooth, you know? And they're stiff. It's not like... On Nintendo 64, there was like a... It was real bad. Like the controller joystick was like terrible. Like it would just like get, it would start getting floppy and wobbly. Like it wouldn't do anything. But these, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely a bigger improvement than the PS4 controller. But hands down, I thought before the PS5 came out, before I used the PS5 controller, PS4 controller, in my opinion, was the better one. I definitely did like the Xbox controller though. But this feels more like the Xbox One, Xbox Series S, whatever. It's heft and weight. As far as like the controller, mm -hmm. but the I feel the joysticks are better on the PS5, and also the buttons are better because I remember on the Xbox One, dude, like the fucking joysticks felt like real loose, like light, like it didn't take much to move them, like there was not enough yeah. resistance in my mind, and then also the buttons were kind of clickier and like yeah. shakier, dude. I picked up the PS4 and the PS5 controller and shook them both. You can hear stuff like moving around in the PS5 controller. <laughs> and that's not because I broke it. Yeah. But the PS5 controller is solid. So I definitely like that. And something else I guess we could jump into is the Steam Deck because it kind of goes in hand in hand with like, okay, a new console, things like that, what we were just talking about with PS5. But also talking about the Vita, the PlayStation Vita. Because that is the handheld that I have, I know the Switch is killing it, absolutely killing it, as far as like yeah, I got one of the number of units sold, the number of games sold, things like that. And then also, it just comes back to, okay, is the Steam Deck going to kill the Switch? And what does the Steam Deck do that's so special? Yeah. So the Steam Deck, man, from what I hear, is basically literally a handheld PC. And what's so cool about this, what's actually over the Switch is, you know, a lot of Nintendo products, this actually has 4K resolution. So you can get up stuff up to 4K. Uh, all of the stuff that's on the Steam library, you can go straight to it. You can browse the internet on it. Yeah. You can watch uh, videos. Uh, <laughs> you can pretty much do anything a PC can do and put it on here. And what's crazy about it, they also said the Xbox Game Pass, you can actually load it up because yeah. it's like, cooperative so you can actually play xbox games on the steam deck as well and i think that's freaking cool i don't know if eventually ps now like you can play ps now games because I, I told you they're gonna upgrade ps now to like ps plus and you can get a bigger library uh -huh. but if you can have everything on that one console that's a game changer the xbox the steam the playstation well besides nintendo i don't know if nintendo gonna have yeah. anything to do with it but if everything can be played on that Probably console not. that's freaking huge man 
<laughs> but I mean, PC people do that all the time anyway. So it's basically like like you said, it's a handheld PC. So I think that's pretty pretty crazy. Um, oh yeah, so, yeah, it um, came out right February here. Twenty fifth. Uh huh. Oh, so it just came out. Came out the same day as Elder. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now on uh, the specs stuff like that. So the oh, Tatiana. I thought Tatiana was yelling at the kids, but she's speaking French. So it's a CPU Zen two four C eight T two point four three point five gigahertz. Up to 448 gigaflops. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> um, 16 gigabyte, gigabytes of RAM. 32-bit um, channels. Storage, 65 gigabytes. 512 gigabyte high-speed SSD. Okay. Yeah. And it just seems... Oh, yeah. So it might have two different... Oh, that might be two different SKUs. Okay. Um, the resolution says 1200 or 1280 by 800 pixels. So it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That's not 4K, but it's kind of. They say it can go up to 4K. They say it actually go up to 8K too. Well, say docked up to 8K huh. and 4K. So I guess if like you connect to the TV. So I guess oh. that's what they mean by. It. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So the resolution <laughs> on the screen of the handheld is. 1280 by 800 pixels. So, yeah, if you dock it and display it to a monitor, then it has the capability of producing a 4K image for you. Like, the power can do 4K, but the screen isn't 4K. Okay, that's interesting. Do you know how much it costs? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. They said the the base cost is uh 400. The mid one is 529. And the highest one, like the, I guess the beefed up one with the, um... 512 gigs is $649. So $650 US. That's nuts. Yeah, so but for a, yeah, so for $650 a, a you can basically built, Yeah. 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 Uh, $650 like uh, a advanced, advanced PC for $650. Like you can just have a handheld like even when you talk about McGavin, shout out to McGavin, it's like his episode with Elden Ring and a PC he can literally have this and play all the PC games on it without even having to worry about the computer. Uh, like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can play Elden Ring on here, so that would be nuts to just play that, like, on the go, or if you got to go take a dump or something, man. So, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, just to carry your fucking game over. I wonder if there's, like, video of that, not of someone <laughs> taking a dump, not the Steam Deck. Um, Elden Ring <laughs> taking a shit. No, I'm just kidding. Elden Ring on Steam Deck. Ooh. Oh man, there's eight minutes of Elden Ring gameplay on Steam Deck. So uh IGN posted it seven days ago. So yeah, that's pretty freaking cool. But uh Linus yeah. Tech Tips talked about how the Steam Deck is incomplete. Someone's playing GTA five on the well, Steam Deck. Well from what I hear uh Steam Deck review, PS4 you can... console quality gaming on handheld. You can stream the game and you can also download the game on it. So that way you can, I guess, have a more mobile like game for real. Because even though it's a PC, yeah. obviously, uh, if you want it on the go, you're going to have to download the game. You don't want to just, you know, be over in tied to your fucking. Like, why buy this when you could just buy, like, <laughs> um, potentially like secondhand, better thing? You could probably have a better PC than this handheld. If you put them six hundred dollars towards building yeah. a new one versus um, buying this, but man, what is going on downstairs? Like they are freaking yeah. like she's like outrageous. <laughs> but yeah, like as far as the Steam Deck, I mean, it definitely looks cool. It's definitely something that I'm not gonna get because I just got a PS5, which is better in every <laughs> way, dude. Like what I thought, what I thought. <laughs> um, but it's just I'm also not a big handheld gaming guy. Like, I have this uh, Vita, but I, I'm i never, like, in a situation where it's like, oh, I'm going to take it to the DMV and play Vita while I'm waiting. You know? I'm never uh, doing anything like that. Most of, the, most of the things I do nowadays, I'm, like, taking it 
uh, or I'm making an appointment and showing up like right when the appointment is. So it's like I get in and I'm not sitting there waiting. Well, the Vita to me and what the Steam Deck ultimately would be would be a vacation console. Like when I went to Puerto Rico for our honeymoon, like I took the Vita and I was playing it on the plane and played it in the hotel room while we were chilling. Like, that's kind of what I use the Vita. I don't know. That's funny. It is funny because when you said the honeymoon, like you just like the Vita like during the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, like she's wanting to like get kind of freaky deaky because it's like the honeymoon. And I'm over here like, babe, I'm trying to play Limbo. I'm playing Steam. I, oh, yeah, that was another one. Shout out to uh, Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig or Steam World Heist because when we went to France for like two weeks, um, I can't remember when. That was like a few years ago. Uh, we went to France for a couple of weeks. I played the shit out of Steam World Heist. I was playing it like the whole time I was there. Not like every day, all day, but what I mean is any downtime, I would be playing the Steam World Heist, and it was so good. I mean, it's not like I could have a conversation with anybody. Everybody spoke French anyway. But it was good. It is good. As far as, do you know how many uh, units the, I can probably look it up, the Switch sold? Oh, I know what's up there. Cause they just came out with another one, and then now with I told you with that Nintendo Switch Online, where you can play like old games. Um, pr- I'm pretty sure people are gonna buy it, like you said, just to play banjo. What banjo? What the Cooley? How you say it? <laughs> the Cooley, banjo kazooie. Yeah, like it, it's an kazooie. Issue. There we go. The banjo and kazooie. Yeah, <laughs> kazoo. Okay. Wow, this is crazy. More specifically, in Nintendo's latest round of quarterly results, the company revealed that 103 million Switch consoles have been sold. That means it has officially surpassed the Wii. So that's a huge success, which sold 101 million copies um, in its lifetime. So great job, Nintendo, for the Nintendo Switch. And dude, oh my god, their list of best-selling Nintendo Switch video games. Let's get to the list. Number one is Mario Kart with 43 million. Animal Crossing, 37 million. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, 27 million. (laughs) Breath of the Wild, 25 million. Pokemon Sword and Shield, 23 million. Super Mario Odyssey, 23 million. And people didn't even like Super Mario Odyssey. People were like, yeah, it's kind of weird. You go to that one level with regular humans, and Mario is like two feet tall. And you're like, what the freak, (laughs) this weird-ass world? But like... I have zero care for the Switch or any Nintendo games. You know what made me excited for the Switch, bro? Was the only reason, well, besides Smash Bros. Mario Kart, I had to play um, Ultimate Alliance 3 with the, all the Marvel characters, Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxies in there. Like, that game, I was like, yo, that was my childhood. So when I got it, I was like, yo, dude, I have to play this. And I haven't played have it in a, a minute because, uh, yeah, I have a Switch. My girl got it for me. I didn't even know that. Two years ago. Yeah. I think February, probably for my birthday. I think it was for my birthday. She got it for me. So I got the Mario Kart, the, uh, the Smash Bros, and Ultimate Alliance. And that Ultimate Alliance is so good. I, like I said, I haven't played the whole thing. But I just had to play it because it's, it's so close to me. Like you said, uh. Just certain games, it's like, yo, dude, I have to continue and I have to do this. And it was just so good when she had yeah. got me the Nintendo Switch uh, because it was something like if we ever want to play together, we can all just play along or whatever like that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, the Switch is awesome, dude. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even know that. Like, I went to Best Buy the other day with my daughters, and my youngest – is like looking up and she's like wanting to go mess with the switch and play the switch. And she's like trying to touch on the buttons (laughs) and she's like two. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, I'm probably gonna have to fucking get a switch for this little rascal. I get her a steam deck so she can play. Like like, like, like she freaking beats all the bosses. (laughs) And she's just like, like, yeah, this is how you do it. But like, I didn't even know you had a switch. And that's what I think is what because i had dude i thought the switch was just kind of like all right it's doing okay 100 million units i didn't know it was doing that yeah it's so way more than the vita the vita has 16 million dude yeah 
That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. I think uh, Sony don't give a fuck about maybe doing a Vita 2 or anything. They're kind of going into Like, the VR thing is, I have every PSP that PS5. came up. Like, I had the PSP original, the PSP uh, Go, I believe it's what it's called, that you had seen. You was like, what's that PSP Go? Yeah, I had that one that you Where could push up, up, and it was only downloadable. Yeah, and I had, obviously, the yeah. Vita. Um so yeah and i think i had the old like game boy color game boy advance i didn't have an sp but i had a game boy um yeah just a game boy advance and what the other one after that the 3ds there we go 3ds and now i had to switch so i always love handhelds because like you said the vacation just in the car just chilling that was always the fun part you know road trip vibing out or even at the house yeah. i would just be doing that so yeah i mean it's definitely cool, but now I'm married with two kids, so I'm the guy. I'm the dad driving. I'm not in the back chilling, playing video games anymore, <laughs> which sucks. That's probably the worst part. Like, hey, about. what you playing, honey? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like, ah, Mario Kart. Ah, ha, 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 have a good time. Have a good time. <laughs> I remember when I would play. I used to play Donkey Kong on the Game Boy yeah. when I was on road trips. I, and she's got her headphones on. She's just like, yeah. like literally just like, yeah, what the fuck? And, then that's and I'm like, like, ah, I play? Ah, ah. like, you don't know how to play, Dad. Yeah, like, what you got there? <laughs> it's like, man, you don't know how to play. And I'm going to be like, dude, I have a YouTube channel where I play games all the time. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know how to play. <laughs> I just admit, I think that's so crazy, you know, it's like, because gaming is a big part of my life, it's like a big hobby that I have, it's like, I think about my dad, who <laughs> does not give a shit about video games, and I'm just like, what do you do for fun? What do you do in your downtime? And he usually just has like, random ass bullshit playing on TV, and you're like, it seems kind of boring. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry. It seems boring. And I don't know. I just think it's funny because it's like my dad would sometimes come in and lay on my bed and watch me play video games. And I would just be dicking around. like, And he's like, he's like, you're killing those guys. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, they're the bad guys. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like nine. I'm like nine shooting dudes with like laser weapons and shit like that on PS2. And he's like. He's like, what is, what is this? What, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's this? Not PS2. Um, probably later than that. Because I think uh, PS2 came out when? 2000? When did 2001? Maybe 2001. Maybe 2001. PS2 probably two, I was in kindergarten. Release. Oh, yeah. October 26, 2000. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. 22 Five. years ago. Wow. <laughs> I was seven when it came out. I had just turned seven. I didn't get it when it first came out. I think I got it like a couple of years later, but it's probably like 10. Because I was 10, that'd be 93. I was playing that. And then like, no, it definitely was like maybe 2001 then. What time did, uh, and I got a, this is how you kind of, I could determine what I was doing at certain times. Um, Ratchet and, oh, actually here, Jack 3. Oh, I used to get my yeah. Jack and Dexter yeah. release date. Yeah. Can oh, yeah. I October 14th, 2000. It wasn't part of mine. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the way you said that. You're like, wasn't part of mine. Because I played it later on. <laughs> I played on the PS3 <laughs> when it really remastered it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I definitely had a PS2 during that time. So... Because Jack and Dexter came out in 2001. Jack 2 came out in 2003. And then Jack 3. Where's Jack 3 at? Why the fuck is it not saying Jack 3? <laughs> come on, dude. Jack 3. What Freaking Jack 4 coming soon. <laughs> That'd be nuts. Yeah, it always says that shit. Jack 3 release date. Damn, it's giving me the Jack 2 release date. Whatever. Jack <laughs> X Combat Racing was 2000. Okay, so, god damn, look at this. Think, look at this. Jack and Dexter came out in 2001. 
Jack 2 came out in 2003. Not even two years later. Jack 3, it's not giving me the fucking time frame. So I'm guessing 2004. Because Jack X Combat Racing is after Jack 3. And that came out in 2005. So in 2001, 3, 4, and 5. There were four games in five years from Naughty Dog. And then I'm over here like... And then, dude, like Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank came out in... Or Ratchet 2 came out in 2003. Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal came out in 2004, which is Ratchet 3. (laughs) So it's like... That was basically... I remember that because Jack 3 came out... Oh, yeah, February 24th, 2004 is when it was uh, it was first announced by Sony in 2004, in February. And then when is it was, when was it fucking released, dude? Give me the date it came out. Fuck. Release. <laughs> February's always been November 2004. November. Yeah, so it was November 2004. So I remember when that came out. So that I was 11 when that game came out. And I was playing for a couple of years before then. Um, Jack won. Or no 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 yeah. I've got I probably got those I was playing years before that Ratchet and Clank I got Ratchet and Clank um, when it came when Ratchet uh, Going Commando came out so I got Ratchet one and the Ratchet two and then I got Jack one and Jack two at uh, the same times respectively I didn't get all four games at the same time yeah. but I got the first and second game at the same time and um, that's crazy so yeah that was like I never played two thousand to. Or, yeah, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, that was uh, 2000 to 2005, my life. <laughs> those games. <sighs> yeah, those games are great, dude. They're fucking great. This it, the yeah, because I was a Crash and a, and a Spiral guy. I wasn't like a Jack and Dexter and the Ratchet and Clank. I was just a Crash and Spiral guy. And obviously, I play all the wrestling games, the... Um, Madden games, you know, basically stuff I still play now, but yeah, yeah. Like, do back then I was playing Demon Souls Japanese version when I was like seventeen, you know. <laughs> Ten years ago, I was a fucking beast at games. Now I suck, man. <laughs> fucking, you know what's crazy? Like with those God of Go War, I didn't even realize what the heck that was until it was PS3 days. I didn't know what the heck. I didn't even know it was on PS2. I didn't even realize that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I knew about God of War when I was in like 7th or 8th grade, something like that. Which was uh like 2008 or some shit. But yeah. Nah, dude. Like, think back about that. When it comes to... I like how we were like, oh yeah, the Steam Deck. This is what it does. And then we just started talking about like PS2. Um, <laughs> with the Steam Deck. And oh, we got on that because of handhelds. I'm not, like, again, I'm not much of a handheld yeah. gamer. When I was playing the Vita, like, heavily, it's got to be the right game, in my opinion, because Stardew Valley, in my opinion, is a great Vita game because it's like you just grab and go, you just pick it up, play a little bit here, pause it, put it down, pick it back up, play a little bit more. And um, it, the game is broken down by days, so you just do all your activities, things like that, and then go to bed that night. It saves the game. And then you could just boot up the next day in the game, right? And it's cool because it's kind of bite-sized chunks. Like, you use all your energy, you go to sleep, you wake back up the next morning. Whereas something like Elden Ring, you can't pause. So playing Elden Ring on the Steam Deck, you're like in the, in like, (laughs) you're up next in line at fucking McDonald's, and you're just like, uh, uh, hold on, uh, like, the boss is, like, whipping, you're like, uh, uh, let me get a, uh, number two, and then, like, the boss is kicking your ass, and you're like, um, it's like, there's no pause in the game to step away, it's like, literally, god damn it, and, uh, you're like, dude, you fucking made me, I'm, I didn't mean to fucking press back, Yeah, but um, you'll be in line, raging. But like, I think handheld games are better when they can be broken down like that, like bite size. That's why I think something like Mario Kart is a good handheld game because you do a race, you do a race a couple minutes and then put it down, 
if you need to. It's like grab and go. You can just play like very small chunks and get a, re- uh, a beginning, middle, and end rewarding experience from a very small amount of time yeah. used. So I think that's cool. I think that's cool. But um, yeah. What what else you got? What else you got? But yeah, with handhelds, like I said, I've been dealing with handhelds all my life. So I always liked them because, yeah. like you said, I was always on the go and stuff like that, man. But um, I I guess I don't see myself like never not playing games because I've been playing games for so long. Like I even told you, like one of my favorite yeah. games growing up was like The Little Mermaid on freaking Sega Genesis three. That that game yeah was kind of scary, but it was so fun. Like Little Mermaid was awesome. Streets of Rage was probably the first game I ever played. And Black Hawk Down, I think that was the name of the game, was the second one. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it was Streets of Rage, Black Hawk Down, then Little Mermaid. Uh, and that Road Rage, Road Rash, whatever it was called. Yeah. So, now I'm Rush. like, you know, as I get older, I'm like, dang, I'm, I'm still playing games. <laughs> it was Raid Rush? Uh, Raid, what's we talking about? Roll Rush? Uh, there was a game called Rush. And then a, there was another game called Cruiser Rush. World. Dude, the Little Mermaid game on okay. Sega came out before I was born. Came out in 1992. Well, I played the heck. Ariel, the Little I Mermaid, think it's still Sega my bed Genesis, somewhere. full, full walkthrough on difficult. And dude, the video is 30 <laughs> full <minutes long>. walkthrough. <laughs> yeah, full walkthrough. The game is oh my god, the <laughs> graphics, dude. I wonder if that Here, I'll do it for uh, like a quick second. I'll do like a quick second of showing. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, those. Yeah, I think game. it was a level with electric eels. Like I used to be scared as a mother freak because if you die, yeah. like Ursula and the eels will freaking pop up, and I was like, oh, like I was scared of <laughs> Ursula as a kid. Man. I was so scared. Dude. <laughs> fucking <laughs> Ursula, dude. Yeah. That's funny. Like, I was so yeah, scared. I never played the game. What was the? Fir- Do you remember the first game you ever played? Yeah, Streets of Rage. Was it the Streets of Rage uh, on that same console? Streets of- yeah, Streets of Rage. Uh, two baby. Streets of Rage three. It was one of the Streets of Rage. Yeah, I gotta see went? when they came out. Uh, Here's Streets of Rage on Sega. The PlayStation came out in two thousand one. I had to be like four or five then because I was playing that way obviously before. I was born in 95, PS2 came in 2001, so I was playing Sega Genesis probably since I was 3, 4, or 5, maybe. So Streets of Rage came out in 91. And then, here, let's do Streets of Rage 4. So, Just get it. No, hey, no. Oh, Streets of Rage <laughs> it had to be 3. What the fuck? Streets... Dude, Streets <laughs> of Rage 4 came out in 2020. What the fuck? Yeah. It had to be, hold on, okay, I can see the uh, cartridge, let me see, is this it? Oh yeah, Streets of Rage, it was probably Streets of Rage 4, that came out in 94, or I mean 3, I'm sorry, Streets of Rage 3 came out in 1994. It was 3. Because, oh, let me uh, look up Mortal Kombat on Sega. Well, actually came out March 17th, 1994. Dang, so yeah, Streets of Rage was nice. I used to play with a dude uh, with the skates. And I didn't learn until later on, every time you did a special move, like, your health would go down. Like, every time you would spin around. I never knew all of the special attacks, your health would, like, just go down. So I would end up spinning the whole, like, just doing the same thing over and over. I'm like, how the heck am I dying? <laughs> You're like, what yeah. is going on with me, bro? Okay, so <laughs> the Mortal Kombat came out in 1992. Mortal Kombat 2 came out in 93. Yeah. And I believe it was Mortal Kombat 3 then. Sega Genesis. Came out in 95. So Mortal Kombat 3 came out in 95. And I definitely uh, remember we would usually get things like a couple of, like a little bit after. It wasn't like we would get things like day and date. It wouldn't come day and date to our house. Um, We would, (laughs) because my aunt would buy, she had the Sega and we would have it. And then she... If, if Mortal Kombat 3 came out in 95, I was two years old. And I probably started playing games, like, because I remember it was Mortal Kombat 3 on Sega that we had. So, 
if it was right when it came out, that'd be I was two years old. If it was like a year or two afterwards, I was like three or four when I started playing games. And because I remember Mortal Kombat three being yeah. like the first like game I remember playing, you know. Yeah. And I was like three or four ahead of him, or two or two to four years old. So it's like that was twenty four years ago. I'm not changing anytime soon. <laughs> Almost yeah. 25, 26 years ago. Like, if I was two, it was fucking 27 years ago. Almost. It's like, I'm going to invest in my money so I can have more time to play games. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's no, that's why saying. I'm doing it. You know? I'll be going I, I on vacation work to play games, bro. <laughs> I work to play games. Dude. I spend time away from my family so I can spend more time away from my family. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just like the outro be like I hate my family I play video games to get away from them I work to get away from them um, and by working I get money to buy more video games so I accomplish my mission of being away from them yay but no nah, um, <laughs> dude gaming is so fun and I don't know I feel sad for people yeah. who don't have like a hobby like sometimes you ever talk about somebody like I'll talk to people at work and I'm like I'm a team lead, so I, like obviously they want people to meet it, engage with people. So I'll talk to people. I'm like, oh yeah, so what do you like to do outside of uh, work? And they're like, oh nothing. I usually be on TikTok and chill. I'm like, that's it. Like, I'm like, you do nothing else. You don't, you don't invest. You don't want to start a business. You don't want. You don't like fucking going to ballet on the weekends. I don't fucking know. But you do nothing. You just <laughs> chill and be on social media. And the sad part is there's so many people out there that do that. And if you're one of those people, thanks for listening Talk to this to show while you're doing nothing. Yeah, yeah that's kind of true. Wait, let me know, do you take a dump while listening to us? <laughs> right. What are you doing right now listening to us? What are you doing right now? Right fucking now. But yeah, we're going like to keep this episode like, kind of short because last week we did a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and he, the dude would probably like fucking message the show and be like, dude, I was. That was me. You were talking about me, dude. Like I was like <laughs> giving her a round of applause on the backside. You know what I'm saying? Um, fucking uh, with uh, this episode, we're going to keep it a little bit short, so we'll probably cut it here. Um <laughs> With last week's episode, it was two hours long, but it was an in-depth conversation about, like, the American condition. Let's just put it that way. And um, we talk about the Russia-Ukraine situation. So, yeah, definitely check it out. Check out previous episodes. Let us know what other topics you want us to talk about. If you're enjoying the show, um, be sure to message, leave nice reviews, uh, leave a thumbs up, whatever, follow, like, do whatever you got to do to show some kind of support. Right, We definitely appreciate any type of support that comes through it. Even just listening to it and giving us a view on the episode is absolutely amazing. So be sure to, if you're interested, go to the patreon.com slash pandamedia page where you can support us financially. If you want to just catch it on the free feeds and just catch it when it goes live, live for everyone, um, check it out on youtube.com slash panda, or I'm sorry, James Black Panda, where it comes out on Friday. So Patreon for Monday free feeds on Fridays. So that is the end of the episode. Um, I do want to say show up to the stream. Check out Young Moltec on YouTube as well. If you go to the featured channels on James Wong Panda, you'll see his channel there as well. Um, check all that out and we will see you guys next time. Uh, let there multi, 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 be multi. let there be prayers uh, going towards McGavin and his family and uh, also to you and yours. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful time. Bye.